Hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you too, Ella. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm really, really good. I'm very happy to, to meet you finally. Oh, me too, me too. I wanted to say thank you for um, agreeing to join this project of mine. And um, I was very happy and surprised to discover that you have similar interests. And then you've been working with yoga and also spirituality for, mm -hmm. for, for a certain period of time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and personal development um, for many years, many years, since about 2005, so about 15 years, oh no, sorry, 2007, so 13 years. Oh, wow, wow, interesting, that's so amazing. And um, I was very curious to ask you, how did you get into this personal development field and life? Um, oh, I guess I needed to, you know, I, um, I wasn't doing so well and I really, really needed to help myself in a more, um, constructive and healthy and positive way than I had sort of, uh, coped previously, you know, I, I wanted to, to navigate life and feel better um in healthy ways so yeah and i mean it's it, it could be a very long story but that's the that's the idea that's the basic yeah yeah i think that 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 is usually can i say in a nutshell in a nutshell mm -hmm. that's yeah. that is usually the reason why people get into personal development and spirituality for me i guess it was the same thing uh i was i wasn't coping really well with some difficult situations in life and um yeah i think the reason usually i think it's pain yeah and hurt yes yeah, absolutely right yes pain pain inspires us and pushes us to yeah. to do things which are often or well, can be if we're making good choices mm -hmm. um ultimately huge blessings in every area of our life you know and um yeah there's a there's a great spiritual teacher called matt khan who who does some some really interesting um work and teaching and he talks of pain as being you know the escort to a new level of consciousness yeah. if we are able if we have the tools um and and we, we give the commitment and the energy to working with our pain in that way then yeah it certainly is it's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. an inspiration and it's a blessing yeah yeah i love matt ken i love him he mm -hmm. he teaches in you said matt ken right yeah Khan. yeah uh, Khan. Uh, yeah matt Khan. Uh, I love how, can I say, lighthearted he is. Like, yeah, it's perfect. He, I mean, I, I love other spiritual teachers as well, but he's so funny, and I think he he makes things so light, so so he makes it it easier. I think mm -hmm. his teachings are. I, I love to to listen to him. I love him. Yes, absolutely. And it's always a sign, I feel, of somebody who is really, truly at peace in themselves because they do feel the humor and somehow transmit that. You know, <laughs> it's all yeah. just a cosmic joke, essentially. You know? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, 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 um, it, it, it is good when you can, like, um, how, how, what did you say about the pain you can transform yeah and get can, inspired yeah yeah it's it can be your inspiration your motivation um yeah absolutely and you can become the alchemist you know the magician who mm -hmm. turns the, 
the shit in life into gold, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, Ella, I wanted to ask you something because I have a friend and he is from South, South, South Hampton. Uh -huh. And uh, I told him that I was going to have this lesson with you and he wanted to know which part of South Hampton, how do you pronounce your city's name? Yeah, South, South Hampton. Hampton. Yeah. Southampton, and he asked me which part of Southampton you are. I, I don't know what that means. I, it is a big yeah. city and it has a lot of neighborhoods. And uh, yeah, it does. I mean, to be honest, um, that's the nearest big city to to the place where I grew up. Um, I didn't grow up in the city. I grew up in a, a much smaller place. I think it was a village when I was a child. It's probably a small town now, but. Um, much much smaller place called Dibden Purlieu which is on the water side um, to the west of Southampton um, yeah but I haven't lived there for many many years but yes that's where I'm from originally yeah where are you now uh, right now I am on the south coast of England um, uh, a bit further west um, and yeah I don't mm -hmm. know how long okay. I'm going to but, um, yeah. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I showed him your video, and uh, I asked him where is she from, and then he said, he, "You, you, your accent was from the, I maybe he said the north of England. I don't know, but I was like, no, she's from your city, and he's like, no way. I was like, no, she is from there, and he said that you, you didn't sound much like someone from that city so he was curious but i'll tell oh. him okay interesting yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because he understands a lot about accents and um yeah so i'd love to know where he does think i'm from that would be really interesting he said i i, I i'll tell you later he oh, said oh, yeah yeah he yeah, said yeah, the city's name know. and i was like no 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 well, maybe he said the name of the city where you live now Maybe, I, I don't know. I live, I, I live um, not so far away from there, but further along the coast, um, uh, near a place, not in, but near another city called Bournemouth. I think it's mm. a town city, but mm. yeah. But I'm just here temporarily, so yeah. Yeah. Why are you there temporarily? Um, oh, long story, Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> long story, let's go in that box right now. No, so, it's okay. like... <laughs> I was traveling. Um, I was traveling. I was living in Portugal. Uh, yeah. I've been working in a yoga retreat center, but then we had the coronavirus. Yeah. Um, so I stayed in Portugal for quarantine, which was lovely. I was very, very lucky. And um, then I came back to the UK oh. and just sort of landed here temporarily while I decide what to do and where to go next. Mm -hmm. So you're a traveler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, yes, cool. Yes. So, um, you wanted to talk about a particular topic, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted I wanted to talk to you about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I've been I've been thinking a lot about forgiveness, um, and um, reading about it and trying to implement forgiveness in my life i guess up until this point i haven't realized how much forgiveness i have to do like in my family and um, in my in my circle of friends and i guess especially with myself mm. like self-forgiveness that mm, yeah. that that is what i need to practice and apply the most and uh, because I, I realize now that it won't be possible to reach um, higher levels of development and consciousness if I don't start practicing forgiveness and I realize it is something that it's not easy to do but I mean it takes courage and um, and it takes like love as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I was I was wondering why people um, have wronged me or have hurt me, 
or why I have wronged and hurt other people? And I think the, the answer is that, it, it, I mean, it's so much more complex than just hurting someone because sometimes people, they might not be, they might not even be aware that they are hurting you. I think that, I mean, it might be naive to say that, I don't know what you think about it, but I think that everyone is essentially good. I don't think that no one is like on purpose, like, let me hurt this person, let, let me cheat, let me lie, let me screw this person over. Um, I, I don't think people are like that. I think that we are trying to good, we are trying to do good, but sometimes we are acting um, out of ignorance or out of fear or on a desperate search for love um, or with a lack of consciousness. And we are trying to do good, but because we, we lack so much development, we, we do things that end up hurting others, but that's just how maybe the dynamics are in this universe in life. So for example, um, I, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I teach as well. I teach on italki um, and um, I, I'm dealing on a daily basis with people from other co countries and cultures. And I, I have my, like, my own culture and we are so open and we say things in a way and we express ourselves in a way. And, and something that I notice about foreigners is that, I mean, not every foreigner, but maybe people from Europe, they, they don't give explanation for things. Like they just say things like, uh, no, they just say, no, I can't. And, um, and I'm like, what? Because in my culture, we would explain why we are always giving an explanation because we, we maybe we want to make the other person feel like uh, that we care. And even when we are presenting excuses, it's like, I cannot go to your birthday party because you know, my, my cat, it's so sick. He's in the, it, it might not be true, but we will present like an, an explanation. It might be true, like it might be, but so sometimes people, my students or friends that I have abroad, they will say just, no, sorry, I can't. And I'll be like, waiting, why? And I'll, I'll feel hurt and well, I'm learning not to, but I would like, wow, this person couldn't care less about me and my feelings, but it's not the truth like the truth is this person was raised in another culture with a different set of values uh, with ideas and ideologies that this person was indoctrinated into or uh, different upbringing different traumas and experiences a lot it's, it's more complex than this person hurt my feelings just by saying that this person cannot do something mm. the, the person might not even be conscious that the, i was hurt by something and and that is just a simple thing like i shouldn't be i shouldn't feel this way but other more complex things like uh, a betrayal it could it could be a lot of reasons but usually i think they they are it around you know it I, it's, it revolves around uh, the things like uh, fear, lack of love, uh, l low conscious, and yeah, and ignorance. I don't think no one, I don't think that anyone is trying to uh, purposely, purposely, on purpose, hurting us. Um, yeah, and, um, and, and then, and if that's not enough, you can turn this into a self-reflection and think that all the time, all the times that I ended up hurting others, I was being ignorant and fearful and I wanted to get love, but I didn't know how. I mean, the same principle applies to me. So I was never trying to intentionally hurt anyone, but I've done that a thousand times. So 
I should like extend um, or give, extend forgiveness to myself and to others. And because if I won't, if I don't, I will be, I think that pain is a, a chain. And if I don't forgive someone, I will carry that resent, resentment mm -hmm. inside of me and I'll hurt, I'll hurt others in the process. Like, and this person, because maybe it's that too, like you were cheated on and then you cheat someone else and it goes on and on. So if we stop that chain, maybe we we won't pass that pain or hurt to the people that we care about and they won't pass that on and on see mm -hmm. so yeah so i've been thinking about that and i have like i said a lot of forgiveness to do and it is difficult but i mean i need to i need to start i mean i i had i had I have started already, but it is challenging. Okay. What about you? <laughs> now, you know, you've, you've touched on quite a few different areas there. And, you know, we can, we could look at uh, our relationship with obligation to care for other people's feelings we could look at our ability and fears around being completely honest we can look at that um that whole that whole area that whole interesting area of um, of needing to behave in certain ways in order to keep other people happy where does that come from there, there's a lot there you know where you're talking about um, you know, giving the example of uh, people from certain cultures or certain backgrounds being able to just say no and not give an explanation, whereas other people would maybe not be able to say no and do something they didn't want to do in truth. And then that middle place where people will not do the thing they don't want to do, but then lie because they don't want to, don't want to help. I mean, that's a whole nother area. So, yeah. um if we put that down, if we sort of put, put all of the examples down for a moment, what I would say is that, yes, the, the core of it, you know, the, the very first thing I was thinking about this myself, I sort of uh, pondered and, and meditated on it quite a lot this morning. Um, and really the, the first thing, the most important thing, thing with forgiveness the primary kind of like the foundation of forgiveness is actually knowing why we want to forgive and you do which is amazing you know you can see you can feel in yourself personally that to carry the energy of hurt and all of the stuff that comes with that anger blame resentment and the, you know, the feelings, the thoughts, and then maybe the actions that come from that, that's not good for you, you know? So that, that's a really kind of wise knowing in you. Um, <clears throat> the way I would, I would love to look at this is, to share with you, is that If we, when we, we feel something that is a little beyond words, but it's a, it's a knowing, a heart knowing that love and peace are what we all truly crave, 
uh, and, and what our, our journeys through this life have the potential to bring us back to. And that love and peace are how we, through the feelings of love, love and peace, or perhaps love and peace come from the, the truth that we are one with everything, that there is actually just soul. You know, however you want to describe that, whether you describe it as God or love or consciousness or whatever it is, that, that we are all little drops in the ocean. When we have this deep knowing that does go beyond words, that this is what we, we want to, to make of our lives. We want to, to come back to this. We want our lives to be in devotion to love devotion devotion ah devotion devotion yeah. mm -hmm. um then we know why we want to forgive and that's really important because you know we can we can read about it and we can have spiritual teachers and religious texts tell us that you must forgive you must forgive but the first question is well why not because somebody else tells you to because that's never going to really really work you know mm -hmm. only a little bit um but because we we feel deep inside we know that it's better for us we know that it's the thing which is which is drawing us back to love you know letting love come in mm -hmm. being love um because it's us that suffers, you know, when we can't forgive. We sometimes, you know, at different parts in our lives, maybe maybe we, we don't want to forgive and, or we even, we may feel that we want to make the other person suffer, you know, and we might, even if that's not something that exists really strongly within, within you or I as an individual, we'll, we'll have an understanding of that we may have felt it we may feel it in the future there's that like that need for like retribution and that's really primal you know that's protection that's you know i need to survive and we'll be aware of people for whom you know as you said most people don't deliberately hurt others but if if people are in that state of um one with wanting or wishing to inflict pain um, or even just to manipulate another person to their will. Um, it comes from fear. You know, yes. again, that's a whole nother conversation. So I'll put that down there now and then come back to, um, you know, the, the sort of, I, I think of her as like the godmother of self-help, Louise Hay, um, who is the founder of Hay House Publishing and has passed over now. She was an amazing woman. And she said, um, blame leads to guilt and guilt leads to punishment and punishment leads to pain, you know? So the first thing we have to take out of this equation is blame to another person. And, and you're absolutely right to, to bring in self-forgiveness as a crucial part of this. We have to let go of blame first. And this means stopping thinking the next thing so we know why first we know why we want to give the question now is how like how do we actually do that we can we can want to we can read all about it but how do we actually make that shift within ourselves you know using the tools that we've got and the very first thing is to stop thinking stop thinking and be with our feelings yeah so there's, uh, there's a way of understanding pain, um, which I first learned in the books of uh, Martha Beck, who's an amazing writer and teacher and just mm -hmm. awesome human being. Um, and I can send you links as well for all these please, please, all that please. Happens at the end. But um, she, she describes us as having sort of clean pain and dirty pain. So clean pain is the real sort of like a pure response to a, a bad thing happening you know so somebody dies you feel loss you know that that whole grieving process with its anger and its denial and blah, 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 blah. um or you know somebody cheats on you 
you feel hurt, there's pain. That's there's a pure, quite a primal kind of like ah, you know, mm-hmm. all of that. Mm-hmm. and it's very visceral. You know, it's almost like it's in your body, and it's it's your emotional response, your pure emotional response. But then we've got what we call dirty pain, and that is where the mind has gotten involved, and the mind is mm-hmm. saying things like, for instance, this isn't fair. How dare they? I'm never going to be loved again. How am I going to live without this person? Um, you know, uh, I, how am I ever going to find another job? Or whatever it is that's caused you pain, you know? The mind going over and over and over and over and over, whether it's going over fearful thoughts or angry thoughts or blameful thoughts, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So first of all, we have to stop thinking and we have to feel, you know? We have to sit with those really, really strong, super uncomfortable feelings. And there were some really great techniques and tools that we can mm-hmm. use to support ourselves through the super, super strong feelings. Um, I've made a note of a few that I love. So, you know, mm-hmm. this all comes after, under the kind of topic of self-care, self-love. Um, and that's, again, we can kind of park back. That's a whole nother thing. But the bits of it that we need for this conversation... Um, I would say, uh, you know, finding your own way of self-soothing, you know, what works for you? Do you have like a nice self-soothing meditation that you can do? Can you lie down, you know, be with that feeling and just repeating phrases. We're using the mind instead of letting the mind run wild. We're using it in a useful way. So we're repeating phrases like it's safe to feel this way. It's okay to feel this way. It's okay to have big feelings. My feelings are not all of who I am. You know, we can work with inner child meditation. We can see where is this pain actually coming from way, way back in the, in the story of our lives, you know, because any pain that we feel will have roots. There'll be a first time we felt it, you know, mm-hmm. and when we get really strongly triggered, we are, we're, it's activating this whole kind of, of this mm-hmm. particular, the vibrational frequency of this emotion in our past, you know. So we've got our inner child meditations and self-soothing techniques. Um, I love Ho'oponopono, which is um, mm-hmm. the Hawaiian. You've probably mm-hmm. heard of the Hawaiian thing. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you, I'm sorry, I love you. Thank you, I'm sorry, I love you. You know, that's really, really powerful just to give that blessing to your feelings, you know. Mm-hmm. And then another of Martha Beck's phrases is um, maybe say, maybe well, maybe live in joy and peace. You know? And actually speaking to yourself out loud is a really, really great thing because our brains are hardwired to respond, like have a relaxation response to a soothing adult human voice. Mm. You know? Interesting. So that's really mm-hmm. helpful. Equally, it might just, it might be, you know, these are great sort of self-soothing and self-care techniques. What about when we're ragingly angry because of that hurt? You know, basically the same techniques, you know, maybe safe, maybe we will, maybe live, may you live in joy and peace. Thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. you know, it's okay to have big feelings, to let the feelings be what they are, to move the body, you know, to cry, to go for a run, to scream into a pillow, you know, to, to punch something that's not going to be hurt by that, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's letting the, the feelings, letting the feelings be the feelings. And this, this is the beginning of understanding and compassion. You know, and it starts with us. It starts with having that understanding, that compassion, that love for the self. And that's why all the spiritual teachers say, oh, forgiveness comes from within. You know, because that, this is the beginning of it. To be able to be with yourself and to understand yourself, even if you know part of you is saying this is irrational, I don't want to be this angry, I don't want to, you know, have this, this rage or this, this, this heartbreak or whatever. You're bringing love to it, you're bringing attention, you're bringing understanding, and you're developing compassion. And it's from the compassion that you have for yourself that you you can grow compassion for other people. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't want to lose my track. I want to make sure I kind of cover everything. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So, We cease to blame, we cease to think and to chew it over for a while, you know, we put it down. 
to chew it over. Chew it over. Yeah, so like when you've got a thought and you're just going like... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Like an animal. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like cows, like chew the cows. same thing. They eat the grass for like ages, right? And they mm -hmm. just chew, just chewing it over. So do we sit with the feelings and we allow them to be there? But we have to park it. We have to put it down. We have to go and do something else. And sometimes that means being very disciplined with the mind. Mm -hmm. you know? And every time those thoughts come up and the mind wants to go back to it, it's saying, mm -hmm. okay, thank you, I'm sorry, I love you. It's safe not to think about this. I'm going to focus on something else for a while. You know, So we're not holding on to this thing in our head all day, every day, right? Um, but the mind does need to be given its expression in the same way that the emotions need to be given their expression. So again, there are some things that we can do, real actions, like tools that we can use. And you'll probably already be really familiar with like journaling, mm -hmm. uh, writing a letter that you're not intending to send. You know, you can get it all out. Mm -hmm. Oh, whatever it is you know just mm -hmm. really get it all on the paper and then thank you i'm sorry i love you and you burn it you know and it's okay if there's a part of you that needs to bring that back in at some point but you know we're releasing layers sometimes there are layers and layers sometimes we do it once with a person and situation and it's done and sometimes it's something really deep and really old and it comes back a few times but we just take off the layer that we can and we let it go and we go do something else with our lives you know for as long as we can um so you know we're keeping this intention to cease suffering rather than continue to suffer in ourselves with cause suffering to another person. So even if we're, we are having a really angry journaling or writing session, well, that overall intention is there. We're not sending that energy to the other person. We're doing, we know I'm doing this process in order to cease suffering. This is a, an act of love, not hate, you know? Mm -hmm. And all of the, the, you know, the hate, the anger, the, it all comes from fear anyway. So, you know, I'm doing this to soothe fear. I'm doing this for healing. You know, and we kind of have permission to, to do what we need to do to let it go. Um, and then we need to look a little bit at, you know, our behavior in response to hurt. You know, what do we need to do? we need to to look at the difference between forgiveness and allowing you know it's not appropriate to allow um violent forms of behavior abusive forms of behavior whether they're physical emotional mental or energetic and we do need to take appropriate action to care for ourselves, protect ourselves. And again, there's like a whole, we could kind of unpack that further, but um, forgiveness isn't the same as allowing. We need to discern in terms of how we choose to act in response to a, a, a hurt we need to discern the difference between really feeling unsafe and being unsafe you know? and if we are actually unsafe then of course we have to take the most appropriate actions to ensure our safety if we are feeling unsafe but we're not actually in danger. And that's a good question to ask ourselves. Am I actually in danger right now? Mm -hmm. Because we have big fear responses that you know come from that primal need to survive when we're not actually technically unsafe. So it's good to know the difference. But even if there is a part of you that is feeling unsafe when you're not technically unsafe, mm -hmm. that part of you needs to be cared for and protected. 
by a part of you who is you know, bigger and stronger and can hold and protect that. And that part of you also needs permission to not have to run your life, you know? The child within who feels unsafe or feels hurt, whatever it is, doesn't need the additional responsibility of making your decisions for you, you know? <laughs> we have to, and I, and I know this for myself, you know, we have to really say, okay, what, what, what part of me is, what part of me is taking the lead here? You know, okay, there's a feeling of intense anxiety or fear or hurt or whatever, but can I, can I hold on to that and not let that be the thing that makes, the part of me that makes my decisions, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes we need a bit of time and space to discern all of that. And so we have to, we go into the process, we use our tools, we do the stuff, but then we put it down and we go do something else. So it's mm -hmm. not like a full-time job, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this brings a lot more freedom into the whole situation. Um, and we develop, you know, we develop our compassion for the other person because we've, we've given ourselves a nice big, dose of compassion and we can then look at exactly as you say okay why do I think this person is doing doing what they're doing or has done what they have done can we understand can we see that it comes from their own pain their own fear do we know that it, it's, it's a cultural thing they don't even know that they're doing it um, or do we know that it comes from um, you know yeah something in themselves that they're trying to protect mm -hmm. and when we can when we've calmed our own anxieties, fears, hurts, and this, then we can look more clearly at the other person's, and we can maybe see and discern what's going on with them. The understanding builds compassion, you know, and then we can cease to punish the other person if we are, you know. And sometimes we we may be, you know, punishing in a really obvious outward way, like refusing to yeah. speak them or actually yeah. taking form of action against them maybe it's legal action and maybe that's absolutely appropriate in order to you know create a balance keep one person safe ensure fairness you know whatever but are we taking punishing actions towards another person or are we uh taking actions which are fair and come from that bigger self you can hold all feelings and all of the emotions and move from a space of calm, present, peace, love, consciousness, you know? Mm -hmm. So we see what we call punitive action, punishing action, you know? Um, and also energetically punishing other people, you know, the growling, the scowling, the kind of like just sending them bad vibes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did we just let go of that because it's by this time, you know, hopefully it's starting to feel like we, we can, we want to, it becomes easier to. And if we catch ourselves doing that, we go, okay, to the part of us that has picked it up again, we say, okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I love you. May you be safe. May you be well. May you live in joy and peace. I understand it's okay to feel this way. Mind, it's okay that you're going crazy on these thoughts and you're, but. I don't need to believe it. I don't need to listen to it. I'm going to bring my energy somewhere else. I'm going to bring it back into something that brings me the feelings of peace and love and joy, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're, and through all of this work with this intention, you know, energetically we're changing the situation. And then there are meditative practices we can do a bit like the journaling and the letter writing. You know, there are practices we can do where we, we give somebody their energy back with love, you know, mm -hmm. in terms also of looking after ourselves, and the actual energy work is really, really, really helpful. Knowing how to clear our chakras, how to clear our energy fields, how to re nourish ourselves, you know, where is that energy sitting in my physical body or my energy body? Can I, can I clear that energy in this way, that way, you know, using elemental meditations, guided meditations, you know. Um, yeah, there are lots of different forgiveness meditations where you kind of talk to the other person's highest self from your highest self and visualize the, you know, the forgiveness between you. And, you know, there are so many things you can do. But um, 
you know, really simply, and, and particularly, I know you meditate, but if people don't have experience in meditation, some of these other things uh, may be simpler in the beginning. Um, and when we're giving that loving awareness, we're giving it not just to ourselves, we're also now starting to give it to the other person, you know, the hapanapana, mm -hmm. may be safe, may be well, may live in joy and peace. And we, we're giving it to the energy of the situation it starts to become less personal mm -hmm. you know, i'm giving this to me i'm sending it to you because i can see that your shitty behavior comes from your pain and i'm giving it to this this whole relationship this whole opportunity for teaching you know i'm appreciating that this energy is here as my teacher yeah mm -hmm. so we're starting to really move the yeah to really move the energy of the situation and then ah one thing I wanted to mention is that if and when it's appropriate to have a communication with somebody about what's going on, highly recommend researching and trying nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. We communicate without blame, owning how we feel, not what we think, you know, it avoids us projecting and transferring and it does build understanding between people. So if there is a situation where we, we want to resolve and we believe that the other person is a safe person to do that with and that they have a level of consciousness that can meet us in that mm -hmm. place you know and when you're doing forgiveness work and you know non-binary communication with somebody who is you know on this kind of development of the spiritual development or the personal development path it's really magical like really magical because even the most conscious people will hurt each other sometimes it happens yeah when you sit with you know a really good friend you know, like a real sister and you say oh oh when that thing happened i felt so sad i felt really hurt you know and oh i didn't realize oh i was acting from this part of myself but and the conversation is there and the love is there and there's deep understanding and true forgiveness can happen so quickly and so easily when That's both beautiful. people mm -hmm. you know really want it to go that way and know that there was no intention for hurt here but i'm seeing a part of me that is vulnerable and now this part of me has the opportunity to to be spoken about to be spoken of from a conscious part of me with somebody who is meeting me where i'm at you know in this, this continuing devotion to a life of love and forgiveness and so it can be really magical um and essentially at this point, you know, whether the other person is meeting us there or not, we develop our tools, we develop our self-love, our self-care. And, you know, genuine feelings of gratitude can arise. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have the freedom, you know, we have the freedom that we want. We are lighter, as you said. No one wants to be carrying all that around, you know. Another thing is from Matt Khan as well, so you've probably heard it before. Just last thing to mention is, you know, a really, really useful phrase that you can use inside when another when you are kind of in that situation with somebody. Um, perhaps in the situation prior to you actually needing to get to the forgiveness point <laughs> while it's still happening. <laughs> And you can just internally say, I acknowledge your pain. I acknowledge your pain. If you haven't seen the, um, the Matt Khan where he talks about that, I'll send it to you. But, you know, essentially, we do have the tools. We do have the intent. You know, we know why we want to do it. We know how to do it. And it brings us more peace. And then we're resonating that frequency into the world. And that's got to be a good thing for everybody. And, you know, maybe you go through it and you feel that genuine peace and forgiveness. You know, we know we've really got to a deep state of forgiveness, really complete state of forgiveness. And we don't need any kind of retribution. We don't even need any sort of recompense or rebalancing. There's no debt. To be paid because we know that we got a lot out of it 
we got more love, we got more peace from this situation. We don't need the other person, the other person's, um, yeah, debt. There is no debt to be paid. You know, does that make sense? Completely. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. There we are. That's it, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you still have one minute? I just wanted to say something. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I know their time is up. Uh, yeah. So I w I wanted to say thank you because uh, actually yeah I have to I I want to say more than one thing. Um, the first thing is that it was very nice listening to you uh usually when i'm listening to Eckhart Tolle, i i have this sense of peace in myself and um, i felt like the same thing like uh when you were speaking i felt very calm like i was yeah i, I yeah he he's the only one that could do that to me like take me to this place where i'm no longer camilla and i'm just I'm just paying attention and that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you. Uh, and then uh, to go there, that's the thing. You have it in you to yeah, do that. Yeah, I didn't know, but it was, it was listening. It was good to listen <laughs> to you. And uh, the second thing, thank you, because I actually had no idea on how to do forgiveness in a practical level. I was doing it in an intellectual level. I was doing it by thinking by, um, with my rational mind, I was like, okay, so, and actually I could do that through meditation and other practices that's mm -hmm. not intellectually, it's like mm -hmm. with direct experience, I need to feel and not rationalize, rationalize, rationalize about it. Rationalize, yeah. That was what I was doing. So thank you yeah. for that. And I totally agree with the last thing you said that I think their highest strength is this no needing, no need to retaliate not mm -hmm. this yes. i don't i don't have to retaliate i don't okay. have to get even with the other yeah. person yeah yeah so thank you it was such an enlightened conversation i oh, it's absolutely a pleasure to talk and share with you camilla and you yeah. know please be in touch i'll send you oh. some links later on today yeah, please please and, and we'll be talking again i yeah. hope you, yeah Okay. Brilliant. I, and, you know, can I also just say, you have such a light heart. There is so much light coming from Aww. you. Yeah. You're such a, just a beautiful like, conduit of love and, and really sparkly and really, really sweet. Energy. Oh, thank you. you thank know, you. It, it means a lot. So like a cutesy way, but like really like a, there's a very sweet flavor to your energy. And, and I'm sure that the people with whom you are relating are really, really lucky that they're relating. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Love and being. And our intention to forgive is like 80% of actually doing it. The other 20% <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ella. I wish you thank you for your words wow. I, 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 I can say the same about you you have a lovely energy and uh, we'll be talking soon namaste namaste <laughs> kiss ciao